welcome to One More Glass, the weekly wine show that will attempt to demystify the world of wine. Today, we're talking about something we all know, we all love. It's the reason, really, why we're drawn to products like this. Alcohol. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that why you're drawn about. to it? <laughs> That's why I'm drawn to wine. <laughs> you know, you've had a hard day in the office, you come home, you want a drink to relax. Okay, no, all, all jokes aside, Yeah. more alcohol the better? Not necessarily, no, but we're going to go on to that. Okay, is this what we're going to challenge? Yeah, so we're going to talk about alcohol, how it affects the wine and the quality of it. But to, to prove our point, let's start with something a little bit higher alcohol than wine. Right, so here we are. Do you remember this? I do remember Sambuca very well, uh, mm. not fondly. No, we've all been students, haven't we? And, and this is a bit of a go-to drink. So I mean, what... even those that haven't been students will not have fond memories of Sambuca. Yeah. I've never met anyone that's keen on it, but here we go. So basically, we've got Sambuca. Oh my God, where did you buy this from? <laughs> it's did you steal this off an optic at a bar? It's very aspirational product, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, if you were a student, this is the type of uh, closure you would have on your spirits. Mm. Right, if you don't mind passing me a little little glass. Here's a um, vestibule for the Sambuca. Vestible. What, what is the experiment here? I mean, I'm, I, I don't mind drinking shots. But I'd like to know what we're what, planning here. What we're really just trying to show is alcohol. So that's a much larger shot than a normal shot, isn't it? I think. <laughs> is that what? what? Come on, it's that a is espresso glass. Okay. So what's, um, how many milliliters is that? That's a double shot, isn't it? That's probably a double. Yeah. We need to get this party going. Right. What's this got to do with wine? <clears throat> Right, so alcohol is in wine, but in a far lower concentration than it is in Sambuca. And I think what people forget is that alcohol is a source of fuel, which is very reflective of how it's made. Right. Um, so alcohol, to, to do the sciencey bit, as we're so appropriately dressed. Oh yeah, absolutely. This um, is more about safety than, than real science. It's really, yeah, don't, don't try any of this at home. Yeah. Um, so alcohol is actually made by yeast uh, absorbing sugar. Every single grape has sugar in it. So all grape juice is full of sugar. Yeah. We know that now. And that sugar gets eaten by the yeast as they as they sort of go through. And the byproduct is, is carbon dioxide and alcohol. Right. So it's as simple as that. You get a sugary grape juice solution, you yep. put your yeast in it, yep. they make alcohol. Yeast can only make alcohol up to a certain percentage. Yep. Okay. Um, wine has alcohol in, we know that. It's usually between sort of twelve and fifteen percent. That's, yep. that's the standard range. And that's because yeast can only ferment. To, to certain levels, you know, they can rarely go beyond about 20% alcohol. Yep. So spirits are made by taking that alcoholic product and distilling it, so condensing it, and we end up with a supercharged product, basically. Mm. And that sugar that the yeast has consumed is turned into alcohol energy, which is then distilled into these. So um, what alcohol volume are we looking here? This will actually, I know this, because it says, um, says 38%. 38%, so it's yeah. a fair amount of alcohol. So I mean, this is on average three times stronger than a bottle of wine. Yeah, three times. Now look, I'm a pyromaniac and I'm getting itchy fingers, so let's see the fire, let's see the flames. So this energy easily translates into fire. Should easily translate. So I can't even see the flames, Jack. Magic. So that's how. Oh no, there I can. No, that's I can why you shouldn't try this at home because it's wow. genuinely dangerous. I mean, this is why it's good we're wearing goggles. Yeah. The only time you should ever give this to someone is if you're dating a girl and she's really nice, but she's got a bit of hair on the. I top mean, you can lip. see them both absolutely. Yeah, board. they're really going now, aren't they? If yeah. You get a nice close up. Of I think that. there's a better way to be able to actually see the flames, but yeah. I mean, there you go. Look, if you put your hands behind then it, then it burns for a surprisingly long time. I mean, that's really going. Yeah. So that's. Uh, oh yeah, look, you can see the flames there. That's chemistry. So the, the point of that was to illustrate that that high alcohol concentration is enough energy and it's produced, you know, produced by the yeast to create enough energy to catch fire. Whereas if you get something like a glass of wine, nothing. Although last time we didn't think it was a lie. Well, was, yeah, but okay. yeah. Put this over your face. It's not burning, is it? No. No Don't invisible flames, nothing. No. Um, so you need alcohol in, in a fairly high concentration to make it burn. So, so we've got two examples of white wines here, different grape varieties. Obviously we've got a Chardonnay in the Penfolds bin 311. Um, and we have actually a blend of grape varieties with this Bordeaux white wine, uh, Sauvignon Blanc um, being the predominant grape variety in this wine. Yeah, we, um, we've picked them because, oh, and I don't know if we... <laughs> I don't oh my know. God. 
It's still going. I think the glass is breaking. <laughs> no. Yeah, the glass is just... <laughs> wow. I think it's out. Mate, the glass is just it. smashed. I think that's just the sandbag from inside going over the side. No, no, no. Is that actually... I heard it go ching. Right, now they're out. That's intense. <laughs> Someone call the fire brigade. I think they're out. Yeah, they're fine. Yeah. Right, so the reason that we picked these two bottles of wine, they are different grapes, like you said, but the alcohol percentage is, is key here. So in this, we've got just 12.5% alcohol. Um, whereas in this, the, the Pape Clement by the side, we've got a fairly staggering, especially for a white wine, 15.5%. Which is amazing, really, because I think most viewers at home would associate sort of 15.5% alcohol with a real big, big, bold red wine. Maybe if you're going to a steakhouse, you'd have like a, an Argentinian Malbec or something of that nature that would be coming in real punchy, sort of 15, 16%. Yeah. Maybe an Australian Shiraz or maybe something from California that's supercharged Cabernet. It's okay. amazing to think, you know, a white wine at 15.5%. So if you really, really want to get pissed and you've got get, a few quid to spare, get Pap Clement. Get Pap Clement yeah. Blanc. Get pissed, get Pap. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Um, but I think it's interesting that you raised Argentina, California, Australia, even South Africa. All of these hotter countries produce higher alcohol wines. Stereotypically, obviously, we're bucking the trend somewhat here. Let me ask you a question. Now, um, you know, for maybe someone who doesn't know a lot about wine, 15.5%, I'm going to go, wow, I'm gonna really going to feel that flavour of alcohol. Now, mm. is that normally, would you say that's a normal sort of assertion to make? If it's got high alcohol, you're going to feel it? Or is there a difference depending on the quality of the wine? Yeah, completely different. So alcohol, we talk about integration, which is a sort of wine nerdy way of saying, if the wine is well made, you won't taste the booze that well. Like when you buy expensive whiskey, vodka, any, any expensive spirit, yeah. you don't taste the alcohol so much. Yeah. Because whoever's made it has made it in a very particular, you know, fairly meticulous way and they've integrated. The yeah, that's a key to having a good wine, that balance, that ability to integrate alcohol, even when it's high in a wine like this. And this is a very highly scored wine. I mean, this wine retails, um, you know, around 150, 200 pounds a bottle. So this is not a cheap bottle of wine, but it's at 15 and a half percent. So it's a really highly well-made, well-crafted bottle of white wine, yeah. but also at the same time is a boozy wine, you know, and it's going to be something that if you share that with a friend on a, or, or, over, a over a meal, you're going to be fairly jolly at the end of it. Yeah, yeah, it's a good first date wine. Make of that what you will. <laughs> um, going back to alcohol percentages in the new world, yep. I think it's important also to say that although that is a fantastic wine, yep. you know, it's 150 quid, it doesn't mean, high alcohol doesn't mean it's good. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, that's, that's important to remember. All it, all it means, and we're going a bit GCSE biology here. Yeah, so, go on, go so, a bit so geeky. Let's go a bit, let's go a bit geeky. So when a plant photosynthesizes, and remember this, it collects sunlight, yep. and that sunlight is turned into sugar, and that sugar then goes into the grapes. Yep. So the more sunlight in a certain wine region, yep. the higher the alcohol of the final wine, for the most part, because yep. it will accrue more and more sugar into yep. those grapes over the ripening season, and then when the yeast eats it, it has more fuel. So Jack, I've got the 15.5% alcohol white wine here. Can you tell me how I can taste the alcohol in this? So I think if you consider the Sambuca that we, we dare and drink now, yeah. um, you, you taste the alcohol in your throat. Okay. If you ever do a shot of something or drink a neat spirit, it, it sort of warms you or, or burns, depending on the quality, all the way all the way down to your stomach. Yeah. Um, so that's really what you're looking so for. So there's a little bit more heat there. A little bit more heat. And, and I think actually with So wine, if I now taste this, in comparison, you're saying there should be less heat that I'm gonna feel during my- Theoretically, yeah. When I swallow the wine. Okay. In lower concentrations like this, it can actually, if you're being a real dork about it, be easier to pick up the taste of alcohol on your palate. Okay. Uh, alcohol is a desiccant to get really scientific. So it actually absorbs moisture. So if you try some of it, Put it into your mouth. Okay, yeah, sorry. And then swallow it. And then open your mouth and breathe in nice. Then you'll feel the alcohol stuck to your palate. Yeah, yeah, no, unbelievable, yeah. Very good. That's a great thing to try at home. Jack, that was a, a really interesting um, discussion about alcohol and wine. And, uh, and obviously the experiment went extremely well. Yeah. Uh, exactly how we expected. Nothing caught fire. Nothing caught fire at all. Um, but viewers at home, if you've enjoyed uh, watching this episode on alcohol, then please leave your comments below. And of course, we've got a lot more content coming your way. And also we've got other episodes that you might want to go back and watch. So all I would do is ask you to either follow us or subscribe to get all the best content from the number one weekly wine show, One More Glass. That's enough from me, Tom. And is that enough from you, Jack? I think just about, yeah. We'll leave it there. Take care.